All right, so in this video, our goal is to be able to determine the domain and range of a function, and that'll be from its graph or even from like a table. So let's start off by understanding, you know, the concepts behind like how we read function notation. So here we have a graph of h of x. So h of x, let's, let's just write that h of x next here. And we want to use this graph to estimate what h of four is, h of one, and what h of negative four is. So first let's understand and make sure we know what this is even asking for. And I always try to emphasize, especially with my students, to read this properly. This is not h times four, this is h of four. So what that means is um, find the output value or find the y value when the input value, when the x value is four. So in other words, think of it as when x is four, y equals, so looking at this graph, we look for the point with the coordinate x is four. So we have one point here. Here we have a point four comma zero. When x is four, we have one y value of zero. But we can see there's another um, point on the graph right here where x is four. So x is four here and y looks like it's a little more than three. So we'll say y is about 3.2. So the point four comma 3.2. So we can say that when x is four, y is also about 3.2. Also, when x is four, we have another point right here on the graph. And that is a little um, more or a little less than negative two, it seems. Like we'll say it's about negative 2.3. When x is four, y is also negative 2.3. So the y is about negative 2.3. We have three outputs for that one input of x is four. Now let's look at what is h of one. So find the y value when the x value is one. So again, we can write this as just an equation. h of one is equal to, let's look on the graph when x is one, and we have a point here, it seems, the point is about at one comma two, when h is, when h is one, or when x is one, y is two. So we can say h of one equals two. And we can also say h of one is also gonna give a y value at this point. When, h is, when x is one, I mean, when x is one, we have another y value, it seems of about negative three. So that point is at one comma negative three and h of one equals negative three. So again, we have two outputs for the one input value of x equals one for that. Now for this last one, we have h of negative four. So find the y value when the x value is negative four. So let's look at this graph again. When x is negative four, we have this point right here on the graph. And that looks like it's at about negative four and little close to negative four, negative four, so we'll say negative four common negative 3.7. So h of negative four is about negative 3.7. So when x is negative four, y is about negative 3.7. Okay, so now based on that, can we say that this represents a function, you know, a function of x? And, you know, it's not gonna be a function because we have uh, you know several x values that give more then one y value, you have the x value of four given three y values. You have the x value of one given two y values. So this is not gonna be a function. So I'm gonna say no because there are more, because there are, there, are, there are more, there are x values. With multiple y values. Now to get this next 
problem where we have this machine diagram. And from this, we're gonna find f of negative three, f of zero, and f of two. So this is a common diagram to use when we learn about functions. Because think of a function as inputting something into a machine, the machine does something to it, and out comes something else, or potentially some, some other number. So in this function, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the input or the x value and plug it into this equation. So if we wanna find f of three, f of three will be equal to six over negative three minus three. And that'll be six over negative six, which will just be negative one. F of zero will be equal to six over zero minus three. So zero over negative, or six over negative three, which will be negative two. And then F of two will be equal to six over two minus three. Which is six over negative one. Which is just gonna be negative six. So those are our three answers. So now let's um, go over the formal definition of what domain is. So a do the domain of a function we say is essentially all the possible input values that we can put into the function. So all the possible x values that would be okay to plug into the equation. So we're gonna write the set of all input values. And usually we'll think of, think of these as x values. Set of all input values that can be plugged into the function. It can be. And now let's go ahead and look at an example showing what this means in more clear. So going back to that equation for f of x, we have that f of x equals six over x minus three. And if we want to describe what the domain is, a good way to, to um, you know, think about how we can figure out what the domain is, is think about the values that you can't plug into here. So the values that you can't plug in, into here are the values that would make the denominator equal to zero. Um, so that would be x equals three. Because when x equals three, you get you get six over three minus three or, or six over zero. And this is an undefined expression. So three can't be plugged in. So what you could say to the domain are all the x values except three. So we'll say domain all x values except for three, for three, x equals three. And okay, now let's look at this graph to see if it's a function. So here we're coming from this point all the way to this point. We're going you know, up and down and scrolling. So is this going to be a function? Now, to figure out if it's a function, you want to see if there if essentially is anything wrong with it. So are, are there any x values that have more than one y values? So are any x values you know, paired up with you know, two or three y values at least? And here you can see that none of them, every x value only has one y value. So this will be okay. Yes. Each. Oh. Each x value is only signed 
one single y value. And now let's see, what x values have points in this graph? That is, what is the domain of g of x? So um, this is um, one where students will sometimes be um, just thinking of just the points. So their quick response will be, oh, negative 2 is on there. Oh, negative 1, um, you know, 0, 1, you know, 2, and, you know, 3. And four, they'll only want to like um, identify the lattice points or like the whole number of points. However, this is a continuous line. So there's points between these points. There's points, you know, in here, in here. And in fact, you know, there's an infinite number of points on this, you know, graph. There's an infinite number of points between, you know, every pair of points. So, Instead of just listing all the numbers, like instead of writing like negative two, negative one, zero, like that would not, you know, that would not be that would not be possible. What we what we use is we make an interval of values. We say essentially all x values from negative two through four. For all x values. From, from negative two through four, that's in words, but we like to you know, use symbols and notation. So what um, I like to use is interval notation. So we write that X is an element, we use this Greek letter E, and we let, we're gonna use brackets, close bracket around negative two, because we're gonna include negative two, comma, four. So this is, this, this is essentially saying the same thing as this. This shows all the x values of negative two to four, including negative two and four. Now let's go over what the range is. So the range is, is similar to the um, domain, except we're just talking about the y values. So the range are essentially the sets of all y values that can be generated or created from the domain of x values. The set of all y values, you know, or output, you know, output values. That a function can generate. So um, going so we're talking about this graph here. Um, we have you know we have this character Mr. Poofs. Thinks the range of you know this graph of so the, he thinks that the range of g of x is negative one, zero, one, two, and four. And is is he correct? Why or why not? So let's think about this. On this graph, you know we have the x values from negative two. So let's let's write it. Let's draw like a, a horizontal line so from here to here. That's the domain. We're going from negative two to four. The range though, we think about the up down. So the range would be from down here all the way to the top of the graph there. That'll be the range. We think about what y value um, this goes from. So the y value here is negative one. And the y value up here, the largest y value is three. So the range are all the values from negative one to three. Unfortunately, Mr. Cruz is wrong, but that's okay because he's gonna learn. He'll learn that the range are all the y values, all the y values from negative one And let's use that same type of notation except with the y. So y goes from closed close bracket because we're including negative one to negative one, comma three with a bracket around it. And that's your range.